Now let's talk about the blue rebellion. It is quite important to know the blue rebellion. So the blue rebellion and after what happened in the blue rebellion and what was after that. So in March 1859, Riots in Bengal, they refused to cultivate indigo because it was very difficult for them to cultivate indigo. The rent was very high, raw material was not available, they were not getting good earnings from it. So they started to say that we are not going to cultivate indigo anymore. They even attacked indigo factories. This was known as the Blue Rebellion. So since due to the ag agitation among the cultivators and producers of indigo, there was a rebellion, there was a revolt and violence which was taken into account by them to protest against the cultivation of indigo and the burning of factories, destroying of, re repeat, destruction of fa factories was taken place. This came to be known as the Blue Rebellion. As you see here, there are farmers, cultivators who have just stopped the cultivation of indigo. So, let's talk about the Gumastas and the Lathias. So, here are the images of Gumastas and the Lathias. So, now, what do you observe here? The Lathias always has a lathi or a stick with him. So, he must be involved in some kind of job to protect somebody, right? And the Gumastas, whereas they seem chiefly, isn't it? So, Gumastas, these are the agents of planters who used to collect rent from the riots or the cultivators. So, this person was responsible for collection of rent and revenue. Whereas the Lathias, the Lathias, they had a lathi, they had a stick and they were strong men who were maintained by the planters to protect them, to ensure that the rent was given. A song from an indigo producing village. In moments of struggle, people often used to sing songs. Isn't it? It's the same thing even today. That whenever you are sad, whenever you don't feel nice, you sing a song or listen to music and it expresses your feelings and emotions and results in positivity. So it was the same thing at that time. So it was also to inspire each other and build one common relativity and collectivity and a form of unity among all the cultivators. So, such songs gave a glimpse of their feelings, their emotions. During the Indigo Rebellion, many such songs could be heard in villages. So, it was not just general cultivators who were say, saying them. All the villagers who were involved in cultivation and production, who were suffering by this rebellion or who were part of this rebellion, they used to sing songs. It was mainly in the villages of Lower Bengal. So now, here we have an example of such a song. The long lathis wielded by the planter of Molad. Now, lie in cluster, the babus of Kolkata have sailed. To see the great fight, this time the Rayatas are all ready. They will no longer be beaten in silence. They will no longer be given up to their life without fighting the Lathyals. So here you can see it is to motivate the cultivators to fight against the oppression of the Lathyals and Gomastas. The indigo planters, they revolted against the British as well because it was the Britishers who were forcing them indirectly to cultivate and produce indigo. So there was a very big rebellion against that as well. So many indigo cultivators, they refused to cultivate indigo at all. They were not getting involved in cultivation of indigo. Riots, they refused to pay rent, that I would not pay you rent and I am not going to cultivate indigo for you. Those who worked for planters were socially boycotted. So the people who used to work for planters, they were officially and openly boycotted as in we are not going to talk with you, we are not going to have any conversation with you. The Gumastas and the Latias, they were beaten up by these cultivators and producers of indigo. The Zamindas, they supported the riots as they were unhappy with the planters as well. So the Zamindas, because for them, it meant that the revenue would be given to the planters. They were taken away by the source of their livelihood. So even they joined the riots in their rebellion. Now, what, what was the major reason that prompted the riots to revolt? Now, the indigo plantation system was oppressive for the cultivators. There were a lot of challenges which were being faced by the cultivators and nobody understood them. As well as for the local headmen also, it was very difficult to take and collect rent from everybody and then submit it to the government. In 1859, Riots felt that they had the support of local zamindars. 
so the local zamindars as we studied they were supporting these riots in the revolt to come out of this oppressive system the riots also imagine that the british government would also support them in their struggle the riots they felt that british government would support them and after the revolt of 1857 the government was worried about the possibility of another revolt so there was a very big revolt in 1857 the government feared and they did not want any other kind of revolt because that would make them lose all the power and control with the indian native people so due to this news of discontentment of riots the lieutenant governor he told he went in different paths in 1859 magistrate ashley aden in barasat he issued a statement he issued a policy and notice that would specify that the riots would not be forced to produce and cultivate indigo so eden was trying to control the situation but it was already out of hand at the same time it did not consider the miseries the depression and the problems that were being suffered by the riots all these incidents were seen as support as there were caused by the riot now later on an indigo commission was formed this is very important to learn okay what was this indigo commission why was it responsible so worried by the rebellion so a lot of government officials they were worried by the rebellion and they set up the indigo commission so what was the reason behind setting up of this commission the worriness it was to inquire into the system of indigo production it was to lay down a survey system to see how the indigo was produced what were the conditions of cultivators etc it held the planters guilty of their coercive methods so the planters who were controlling the land they were using very bad measures in order to get the cultivators to produce indigo so all these coercive measures they were revealed so it declared that the system as non profitable for riots so it was not at all profitable they were paying high rent they were not getting enough salary etc so it was not at all favorable or just to the riots they were told to fulfill the existing contracts what the contracts that have been made that were to be fulfilled and it allowed them to refuse produce indigo in the future and that indigo commission it gave the power to the cultivators that they are not bound to cultivate indigo in the future now at that time during that revolution there was a very famous quote that came into account so i would rather beg than sow indigo so the people the cultivators they were so angst they had such a big anger uh, in them that they wanted to beg rather than grow indigo such an example is of haji mulla an indigo cultivator of chandpur thana hardi he was interviewed by members of the indigo commission on tuesday 5th of june 1860 this is what came as his answers so ws setan kar president of indigo commission he asked now you are willing to sow indigo and if not what fresh terms would you like to be having so he replied i am not willing to sow he did not want to harvest or cultivate indigo at all i don't know any fresh terms would satisfy me and he said that i don't think anything is going to satisfy me at all mr say he said would you not be willing to sow at a rupee a bundle 1 rupee for 1 bundle of indigo no i would not rather than sow indigo i will go to another country i would rather beg than sow indigo this became as a tagline of that blue rebellion the source of this conversation and interview is the indigo commission report what happened after the blue rebellion so the blue rebellion took place there were new terms and conditions etc what happened after that so government set up the indigo commission and held the planters guilty the commission asked that no further contracts would be made no future contracts would be made just the riots have to complete the existing contracts the government became worried that there would be another rebellion after that which would ensure that the english and the british powers are coming to an end in india now the planters they shifted their operation to bihar so struggling in bengal they shifted to bihar with the discovery of synthetic dyes in late 19th century their business was severely affected so since indigo cultivation was being collapsed in india as well 
as the indigo cultivation it was coming to an end in the different parts of india and artificial dyes were also made in the 19th century the businesses of these planters it was coming to an end and it was getting affected severely even they managed to increase the production now on the return of mahatma gandhi from south africa a peasant from bihar he persuaded him to visit champaran champaran was a place which is very famous for indigo production he requested him to see the conditions of cultivators and producers in champaran mahatma gandhi he visited champaran in 1917 and he marked the beginning of the champaran movement against the indigo planters so here is one such picture from the champaran movement now the elsewhere what was happening in the other parts of the country the indigo making in west indies so earlier west indies was the core producer of indigo plant as you can see here here is an image in the early 18th century the french missionaries the french people who colonized africa jean baptiste laba he traveled to the caribbean islands and wrote extensively about the region and its cultivation of indigo so what have we learned in this chapter so far we learned about what was diwan and diwani system then we saw that there was a need to improve the agriculture process and agriculture system apart from that we saw different kind of revenue system such as mehrwari system and munro system then we saw the demand of indigo the how the demand of indigo it increased what was the process of cultivation and production of indigo and how the indigo industry in india declined apart from that we saw what was indigo commission and what happened in west indies so i hope you understood everything in this chapter thank you